Aurora, appreciate y'all being here. Much obliged, much obliged. While we're just uh, waiting to get started here, I'm going to read you something that, uh, um, am I even on here? Connection's unstable. Let me try a different Wi-Fi. Hold on just a second. Connection's unstable. Okay, we'll try this again. It looks good. Can you all hear and hear me? All right, so can you all hear me? Better, okay, gotcha. Jay Giles, right on. All right, wow. All right, cool, right on, man. All right, paying my bills, right on. Freeze frame, freeze frame. All right, so I'm just going to start with something while we're waiting for people to jump on here. Um, I can't uh, read this, but and you know, some of you might be so mad you you leave. That's fine. That's just what I'm reading. And this is a book by Ida Onoroff and uh, Eleanor McBean, The Silent Killer. And this is before what's the the current thing is it's nuts and if uh if you just read you'll be like whole oh, i just it's nuts to me how 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 far we've come down this rabbit hole given what we know about previous uh experience and so i'm just going to read you something here this is from gerald ford uh the president's message to congress requesting a special supplemental appropriation for the production of the jabbits dateline march 25th 1976 to the congress of the united states the nation faces a serious potential public interest threat this winter from a strain of virus known as swine influenza. One month ago, this strain of influenza was discovered and isolated, isolated, was it, among Army recruits at Fort Dix. Really? Uh, the appearance of this strain has caused concern within the metal community because this virus is very similar to the one that caused a widespread and very deadly flu epidemic in 1918 and 1919. Some Americans will recall that 548,000 people died in this country during that tragic period and 20 million people worldwide. I have consulted with members of my administration, leading members of the health community and public officials about the implication of the new appearance of the swine flu. I've been advised that there is a very real possibility that unless we take effective counteraction, there could be an epidemic of this dangerous disease next fall in the United States. Ooh. The facts that have been presented to me in the last few days have come from the very, very best medical authorities in the U.S. These facts do not suggest there is any cause for alarm. The scientific community understands what we're dealing with, and they have developed a vaccine that will be effective in combating it. The facts do suggest, however, that there need to be action now. Action by the government, action by industry, and the medical community, and most of all, by our citizens. Although no one knows at this time exactly how serious a threat this could be, we cannot afford to take chances with the health of our people. So I'm asking Congress for a special supplemental appropriation of $135 million prior to their April recess to ensure the production of a sufficient vaccine to inoculate every man, woman, and child in the U.S. Uh, finally, I'm asking each and every American to make certain he or, she's he or she receives the vaccine this fall. Inoculations are to be available at schools, hospitals, physicians' offices, and public health facilities. 
Extraordinary measures are necessary because a short time period available to the assure adequate vaccine production and to mobilize the nation's health nation's healthcare delivery. Oh boy. Um, I urge Congress to act immediately. It's just kind of funny because uh, we know what happens after that, which is crazy. Um, right here, uh, I want to show. We continue, this is for Ford again, right in the Congress. We continue to be faced with a major problem in meeting our goal. Although experience indicates that there is very low risk of untoward reactions to the vaccines, the drug manufacturers producing the vaccine for the health is the uh, their, what's now called the HHS need some form of appropriate liability protection. <laughs> and then while we're waiting for a couple more people getting on here, I'm just going to read something from uh, this is from Larence Doctor Halliday Fink, Doctor Fink, who is assistant chief of neuro- neurosurgery the Navy, the National Naval Medical Center, uh, Center, and he wrote to the Washington Post, Dateline 12 1976. Swine flu, the lessons not learned. Recent developments in the swine flu immuniza- immunization program should serve to underscore once again the potentially disastrous consequences of the politicization of medicine. As an honorable profession, medicine has maintained its ethic and its effectiveness only by remaining above and beyond the reach of politics. Now, for what is probably the first time in American medicine, the political concerns and campaign rhetoric of the federal executive had conspired to launch a poorly conceived and virtually untasted mass immunization program. The unfortunate consequences of which are now becoming apparent, the development of GBS, I can't pronounce it, Gillian Bear. There are ample indications that the government did not consider all the available evidence and achieves and indeed chose to ignore contrary evidence that such a program was ill-advised. It is truly remarkable to consider that whereas it takes years of carefully controlled investigation to introduce any new drug into the United States, despite the fact that such a drug may have been successfully used in other Western nations, the swine flu program was put together in a few short months to meet a political deadline based on the only the mere speculation that an outbreak of swine flu might occur in the country. In a campaign of terror, the government likened the potential of swine flu to the influenza pandemic of 1918, which claimed millions of lives worldwide and chose to ignore entirely the fact the vast majority of those deaths occurred as a result of secondary complications that could be readily treated today with common agents then not available, such as antibiotics and IV solutions. Notwithstanding the fact that less than five documented cases of swine flu had occurred in a population of over 200 million, the government demanded a mass immunization program, the complications of which already known and yet to be discovered probably exceed the risk of the disease. Um, And with the most craven disregard of the fundamental rights of its citizens, the Department of Defense made this immunization mandatory for all military personnel. Indeed, without any foundation whatsoever, DOD attempted to require double-dose injections for those military and were deterred, not by medical considerations, but only by the fact that the double-dose was impractical and the auto-injector selected for the use. To the credit of many physicians, civilian military alike, they refused to be stampeded into taking the injections themselves or advising their patients to do so. Um, Perhaps the military is awakening. I have dozens of letters from military persons who have asked for advice what they can do to avoid taking the political vaccination. The suggestion of an investigation is excellent, but a a congressional investigation would be like Nixon investigating Watergate. Point being is, if you trust these guys in the government, you're freaking nuts, man. Uh, It's just all there is to it. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, because, I mean, literally right out the gate after this, they came down with the Legionnaires, which came from the Soviet Union in Hong Kong. Literally two years after this, the debacle of the swine flu vaccination, uh, they started promoting, we got to protect against the Legionnaires. Yeah, and then, then in 1986, Reagan signed the act, which gave uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers a uh, 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 complete liability shield. And you can't blame pharmaceuticals companies. I don't like them, but you can't blame them. They're like, dude. If you're going to mandate our product 
uh, the federal government, we can't be responsible for what the government does to our product. You can't hold us responsible if you're going to mandate it. It's just that simple. And so the government said, okay, we'll mandate it. You can get rich off it. We'll take the risks. Again, privatize the profits, socialize the risk. And that's the same thing that happened with Fannie Mae, by the way. By the way. You might remember Fannie Mae. Lots of politicians, Jamie Gorlick, Franklin Reigns, Republicans got rich off of Fannie Mae, and we all bailed them out, and yet they did not get back their ill-gotten gains. Oh, Big Pharma, who's Billy Tazen? Oh, yeah, Billy Tazen. Remember him? He was a Democrat turned Republican who became the chief spokesman for Big Pharma uh, at, what, 2006 or four or something like that, and uh, was the biggest lobbyist there was, and was just spending money. Um, Ed Rollins used to call it walk around money. So he would, uh, he was an old school politician that would basically go to a poor neighborhoods and they, you know, he wouldn't, but he'd hire people to do that and give uh, walk around money. I'm going to give it to priests or to uh, pastors and whatnot. I'm going to give you a bunch of cash as walk around money to make sure you support our candidate. And it's the same thing. Big pharma does it. It's in the big government. Does it. This, this is the same thing. These guys aren't looking out for you. That's where I'm going with this. They're not looking out for you. Only you can look out for yourself. If you think the government gives two quacks about you, or you think the government is, when I was just re- listening to some guy today, I forgot who it was, the idea the government is a razor fist. If you're not listening to razor fist, you're wrong. Um, he's talking about the government doesn't care two quacks about green stuff. They just want to put the hurting on you. That's just a fact. Anyway, the point being is the whole reason I do this this stuff is to introduce ideas that say, yeah, maybe you haven't been exposed to them, but also recognize you are responsible ultimately for your own crap. That's all there is to it. And I was like, I had this lady, she goes, what did she say on my YouTube channel? Um, I'm not going to be able to find the thing. I can't remember. She goes, uh, you're only, this doesn't help me because you're only advising rich people. I said, whatever, lady, you're in the United States, you're rich. And she was, you're not dealing with reality. I said, well, maybe you have to keep working because maybe the chips haven't fallen the way they should. I don't know anything about it. I don't even know as a chick, but I was just like, you know, the facts are, if you're in the United States, you got no reason to complain. None. I don't want to hear it. Don't hear any complaints. You got none whatsoever. Uh, just reading today about uh, this guy, Jane, uh, Jerome. So let's read if we can find him. Jerome, uh, hold on just a second. Uh, Dr. Jerome Andrulanis, a 32-year-old researcher working on the rabies laboratory in the New York State Department of Health. He was completely immunized, immunized from uh, contracting rabies, by, but, uh, but according to the Associated Press, he was fully immunized and had on- antibodies for the disease but he was hospitalized in serious conditions. He went in a coma and he would never regain. I mean, he was able to, uh, he was a childlike. He basically had no capacity other than the three-year-old after that. Um, now that guy might have, he's not a, he is a victim 100%. Uh, this lady who's writing on my YouTube channel is not a victim. I just, I'm tired of hearing the victim crap. I'm tired of it, frankly. I'm tired of hearing like, oh, it's not fair. I just don't care. You live in the United States, it's fair. 99% of the world would kill to be here. That's the fact. So I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Got no freaking place for whiners. This is a wine free zone. And I don't want to hear about the government's going to freaking take away your firearms or the freaking zombies going to come and take away your. I don't want to hear any of that crap, man. I, I want to hear what can you do to advance the ball forward in your own life. And the way you can do is a take a gauge of your expenses, obviously. B say, what can I do? Instead of griping about stupid Katanji, whatever that I mean, like that, that chick is dumb as rocks. We all know that. She can't define a woman. It's a facade. The whole thing's fake. It's, it's falling apart. We're even beyond the precipice. It's falling apart. It's going to collapse. It doesn't mean it has to be bad, though. I mean, we are dealing in a decadent society of pure evil. It's just all there is to it, man. It's the bread and circuses that's in our, it's, in, it's here. And we're all part of it. And when that falls, it doesn't mean it has to be bad. But it will. It might not happen in our lifetime. It might not happen in our kids' lifetime. But the idea that when a Supreme Court justice who is only put on there because of her skin color and gender, if she can, can she even identify as her gender? Well, I mean, we know this place has fallen apart. And it's okay. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm at peace with it. And you say, okay, you got Sniffy Joe in office who's, start, who's begging for start World War III. I can't do anything about it. So I'm just not going to get pissed. It's, too, it's not worth it. What I'm going to do is try to advance the, the ball 
and make sure I'm prepared. And you be prepared by looking at the things you're doing right now that's holding you back. All right. So I hope that helps. I mean, again, people say you, I had some of the way you shouldn't. I love your stuff, but your politics. I don't care. I just don't care. It's like she goes, why don't you stop? Uh, can you stop talking politics? I was like, no, I can't. It's freaking who I am. I don't, don't fall. I don't care. All right. So let's uh, let's see what we got here. So I appreciate you all being here. Pretty good crowd so far. So much obliged. Um, they're not. No one cares about you like you. do. Just remember that. I don't care about you like you do. Charles Schwab doesn't care about you like you do. Your money manager doesn't care about you like you. Fisher Investments, they don't care about you like you do. No one cares. So take some freaking responsibility. All right. All right let's see what we got here, my friends. I appreciate y'all being here. Um, not Jeremy, I'm not being on Rumble until um until I can get it to on my live. It's just it's it's not. Rumble, I who was I following? I, I like the fact that Rumble and locals are combined. That's actually very interesting to me. I've uh I've gotten off the locals a little bit. Not I mean I still am on there. I still follow uh Viva Frey, uh Michael Yon, others on locals. I like locals, I'm a big fan, long time first time. Um and I like the fact that there's an a, affiliation there. I think you know the self the both are owned um jointly or whatever, but uh I, uh, I just haven't used it that much yet. I need to. Uh, I like that a lot. That That's, in my opinion, that's where the future is going to be. But um, but anyway, until Rumble, I can get Rumble corresponding with my YouTube stuff. It's just not, I'm not going to do it. Um, it's just, it's a pain. Um, I hate, it's not that big of a pain, but it's, it's just not, not, doesn't get me fired up. Now, with that said, with locals and Rumble, you know, mixed at the, at the hip here, that has a lot of opportunity there. And I'll start uh, using Rumble more. Um, but you know, the point is the message I want to make sure we get out to as many people as possible, um, that, you know, they don't have to work in some crappy old job, putting 25 pounds on and getting older and older and older and looking like Hillary Clinton. They don't Now some might, you know what I'm saying? But you know, a lot of us don't. And as such, I want to reach the biggest audiences we can. And, uh, and YouTube is still it by far. I mean, I, I cooked, Oh, by the way, some, someone in here had recommended get a Ninja Instapot. Oh, just had my first Ninja Instapot uh, roasted chicken. Oh, TDF, man. To die for. I cannot wait. I'm going to do the short rib uh, tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. The short beef ribs and some kind of tomato pasta, tomato paste. Oh, I can't flip and wait. So if you don't have yourself a Ninja Instapot, oh, my goodness. Buy you one. If you do it on Amazon, I'll put a link. I'll do a video on it. Buy it through my thing so I can get that sweet, sweet commission from Jeff Bezos and Mackenzie Bezos, that clown. Mackenzie Bezos, who wants to kill black babies. All right. Anyway, um, oh, that thing was freaking smoking. It was good, man. Good, good, good. Obviously, you don't want to use a Ninja Instapot if uh, uh, if you're off a battery bank. And you certainly aren't going to use it on solar power during the nighttime. But, uh, man, whoo-wee. My man, Bob is doing some research. How long does it take to charge a Tesla plugging into your 120 electric outlet? And, uh, we're, just, we're both, he's emailing back and forth. We're both just had a uh, chuckle because the idea that I'm just going to plug my electric car into my outlet and next thing you know, I'll be driving. It's just freaking idiotic. Hey, Eric's here right on. The cabin in Maine, right on, man. All right. The Facebook ad before I logged in was Masterclass by Hillary Clinton. Oh my goodness, that is classic. The, oh man, the Facebook ad I logged it was masterclass by. Oh. Yeah, I got no topic, man. I just want to go over that right there. Choctaw. Choctaw. This was Tata's Retirement Live Bait and Switch. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right. My entire unit was jabbed with swine flu at Fort Lewis, Washington. No, Chicken Charlie, don't you know that if you eat broccoli and other vegetables, you're going to die? You're going to die? Come on, Chicken Charlie. If you eat broccoli, you will die. All right. All right. Uh, tomorrow makes two months of retirement. 55-year-olds. Life is good. Feel secure in my decision. 
Well, Tom, let's hope we feel the same if the markets go south. Remember, you always got to you know, be uh, prepared for the, uh, the downside because there's tons of downside risk. And it's tough. It's tough. In my models and right capital, I show pre I show worst downside risk in 1930 or 31, 1930, and then 2008. And downside risk, I'm using standard of deviations of a certain amount. Uh, but anyway, I'm showing worst downside, what's called a drawdown. And then we had in 1931 or 30, I can't remember which year that was, and then uh, 2008. But yeah, it's still not going to be easy to sleep at night. Man. That's why the four years cash thing works. Um, a lot of people ask me about four years cash. What exactly does it mean? Uh, you know, I don't have any right or wrong answer there. I just, the way I see it, for me, it's going to be Ginny May um, at the Vanguard, Ginny May. Yeah, you need to have enough literal cash to see you through a year, if that makes sense. All right. When I mean literal cash, it doesn't have to be in a safe box. But at your local uh, Navy Federal Credit Union, you know what I'm saying? You have it at your local Federal Credit Union that you can go into the bank, take money out, put money in, write checks, you know, and use the ATM and all that. That's cash. You don't need four years sitting there. I actually think bonds look pretty attractive right now, frankly. I really, really do. So for me, I mean, I'm not there. So I'm only 51. You know what I'm saying? I'm still I'm still growing. I'm still putting money away. I'm still paying off debt. I'm still working. I'm still working. I'm still working. So I don't want four years of cash. And it's just, it's a, and I hate to say cash is synonymous with short-term bond funds, but in some ways they are. It's safe money. And I don't mean long-term government bonds. I don't mean long-term corporate bonds. I don't even mean zero coupon bonds. I'm talking short-term stuff with low duration risk, low volatility. Ginny May, uh, short-term intermediate bond fund, is, is, uh, gut, treasuries is, is fine, but you know, stable value fund, uh, gu uh, guaranteed investment contracts through your 401k. The G fund is perfect. The G fund of TSP is perfect. But on the G fund right now, it's like the freaking man. I, I just see take a look. Have you all heard the song by Jason Isbell, uh, When We Were Vampires? Oh, man. Ugh, that guy is just, that guy is a, that's the guy who wrote Outfit from Drive-By Truckers. Um, that guy is a, uh, North Alabama is where he's from. And he is just, he is a song. He's He's got to be Irish. Got to be some Irish in there because Irish are good at writing lyrics. That's for doggone sure. All right. So I want to see what the TSP has done this year. So we're going to go to fund performance, and we're going to go to race return, and we're just going to look at the G fund. Oops. G fund, all right. And we're going to go down to, so it's up 0.28% this year, so not much. So, um, you know, but you can see right here, well, all, I bet the F fund is getting smoked. So the F fund, I bet, is not up 0.28%. So let's take a look at the F fund. Um, where's the F fund? Yeah, year-to-date, negative 3.15. Why is the G fund up and the F fund is not? Because the G fund is 100% guaranteed not to lose any money. It's like a stable value fund, which is fantastic. F fund is their fixed income fund. So let's just say, I'm just curious what these other guys are doing. Uh, C fund is S&P 500 is down 8 uh small cap values down the small caps down 10 international is down six and a half all right there you go um that's a tsp i like tsp i'm a big fan long time first time but um everyone's like we need more options no you don't you don't need more options okay so we got a like on facebook again i'm, I'm on facebook just to draw people over to youtube because it seems like uh people get notified on facebook better than they get on youtube um i don't I, I'm not all that engaged in Facebook. I'm not a big fan of Facebook, but the facts are the people I'm trying to reach are on Facebook. You know, that's just fact. And I'd be stupid to uh, to avoid those people um, because I think I have something to say. And they can say, you know, get the hell out of here, Scanlon, throw tomatoes at me. But, you know, it doesn't take many to change, uh, to, you know, to, to get a, to generate some momentum that says, hey, maybe this guy has something to say. Oh, some people went blind. Yeah, that swine flu vaccine hurt a lot of people, man. What I'm saying. Oh, man. Charlotte Finn and Pablo. That is classic. Oh, man, that's classic. Oh, yeah. Green, green eggs and ham. Uh, yikes. Oof. Well, my daughter had swine flu in 2009. That's for sure. And, uh, I did. <laughs> so, um, Scary stuff. 
I, I'll never do any of this again. I'm just telling you right now, I'm stunned how, how I fell for it. And I'm, I'm a pretty contrarian guy, but yet, you know, the idea that uh, I just find it, this is the problem I have with conservatives and the government, they're in, they're a bumbling, incompetent, or they're evil, one of those two. But when it comes to the jab is, ah, I trust them explicitly because science. Okay, so the government can't, can't do anything right. Uh, they're bumbling, incompetent, or they're evil. Those things seem mutually exclusive. But when it comes to military operations, DOD, for instance, or the jab is, the government's competent. That seems odd to me, but whatever. Oh, but Josh, don't you understand? The government isn't actually making the facts. Okay, the government is regulating it. And uh, if you trust the FDA, um, okay, I got nothing to say. Uh, Michigan in the house, right on, CB. There's James, right on, man. I'm working on accelerated pay down my mortgage. I'll tell you that right now. I'm on an air arm. And uh, the reason I'm on an arm is I want that sucker. That's my incentive to pay that sucker off, Denise. So um, you know, my arm doesn't, is that five or six? I can't remember. I can't remember. I think it was a seven-year arm I took out in 2019, 18, something like that. But I wanted to have it paid off by the end of the seven years. And so um, I'm on a seven-year arm, and my whole goal is to have that sucker paid off. Just think of how, A, relaxing it's going to be with no mortgage, and B, how much more money it's going to free up to do other things with, and C, the, the lack of a need for that other money as well. Hey, man. Check it from Alaska. Breakup has starred for us folks. Breakup, I don't know what that means. Uh, look at Harry knocking. You thought you spelled knocking, Harry. It's with a K. <laughs> All right. All right. Before you start accelerating mortgage payments, make. Oh, man, right there. Just paid off mortgage. Oh, that's freaking fantastic, John. Hey, there's Vaughn. Was vacation, was vacation at Bellevue Stratford Hotel a couple weeks before the Legionnaires outbreak shut the hotel down. Yeah, right on. I, I just want to point out, too, it's like a lot of people say we were so much more free back in the old. No, we weren't, man. We just simply were not. We, we were not so much freer. And never mind blacks without their ability to vote or just engage in regular society or American. No, I'm not even talking about that. It's horrible. It's evil. But, you know, just even good old fashioned American white people, we weren't free relative to what we are now. Just it's not true. And all these people say the way it was in the old days. So say, no, no, it wasn't. It just wasn't. Now we had. I, I just, we got to stop this. We always look back at fondness of the, the past. Always do. And I do. You know what I'm saying? And um, I even look back at the fondness when we were poor. As, you know, my wife and I, we lived in, I, I mean, I just look back. So, oh, man, those are the times. They weren't back then. I'll tell you that right now. Back then, it's like, this freaking sucks. You know what I'm saying? But I always look back and find it's like, oh, wasn't that great? We we're so poor. You know, we had to go and share one burrito at the Blue Burrito in Phoenix, Arizona. We, we had to drink water. And I just, no, it wasn't good. Uh, Kevin says, manage at 51, manage paying off housing, youngest through college, building wealth like credit. 100%, man. 100%. And the nice thing is, my man Kevin, if things go dicey where the money doesn't come in so much, he doesn't have to lose sleep. And I say, I got to pay my mortgage. He's like, yeah, it sucks. I'm not being able to contribute to my 401k, my IRA, whatever. But you know something? I don't have to pay mortgage. Yeah, Tony paid off mortgage at 51. That's freaking fantastic. One hundred percent. West. Look, there is no better place. There is no better place in the world than the United States of America. None. Yeah, I mean, I would never live in Cook County, Illinois. I mean, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? I'll never live in Austin, Texas, and I'll certainly never step foot again into California if I can avoid it. That doesn't mean people there are stupid. It just means they've allowed the government to take over and act like fools. But at the end of the day, not one person mandated I put a jab. Not one person ever came up to me and say, jab or jail. That didn't happen. Um, not one person has ever said, give me your firearms. Not one person. And it's just, I mean, could it happen? Absolutely. It never happened. Not one person has ever come down to me and said, I cannot sell you stuff because I happen to find out you voted for Trump. It's never happened. America's, look, America is freaking the best place, divine intervention that ever has been. The American government, red or blue, sucks donkey balls. Let's just put it that way. They're evil up in that place. That's why the best thing Trump did, and I think went under 
recognized by myself included was the idea of moving the Department of Energy to, I think it was doing to Kansas City, the Department of Interior to, to uh, Denver. If we get another Republican in there, he should continue on. Break up the swamp. I, I tell you, man, break up the swamp 100%. Get it out of the D.C. corridor. That changes everything. Make these bureaucrats or see who the people are they're serving as opposed to each other. It's great. Um, and you know, this is the same thing with the FBI. I can't stand the higher levels of the FBI. I, cannot, I don't trust the CIA. Uh, but the FBI is run by a lot of good guys in there. Or not run. Well, there's a lot of good guys in the FBI. Border control. Tons of good guys in there. Man, you want them on our side. These are not the enemy. As the, the leadership, which is just and from, don't forget, Victoria Newland started with uh, Clinton, went through Cheney, went through Bush, went through Trump, now with stupid Snippy Joe. I mean, these are Robert Mueller. You know what I'm saying? It, you, it's all the same people. It's the uniparty over there. But the people underneath them, I, I guarantee there's tons of IRS people that are pretty righteous. Guarantee. Now, do the, the majority of them uh, donate to uh, to Democrats? Yes, but that you know that doesn't mean that the whole freaking thing is rotten to the core. Just means the leadership is, and there are some bad people there. Don't get me wrong. I mean, some horrible teachers, some some evil Nazi teachers. And I mean Nazis, communal Nazis teachers. But you know, the and the NEA and the A the AFT are run by complete uh, that those groups need to be broken up. But with that said. At the end of the day, you know, don't mistake in that because our government is corrupted, and it is. It's probably the most corrupt government in the history of mankind, frankly, uh, with all the money that is taken that 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 changes hands. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to actual corruptness, we're not. But in terms of the dollar amount, by far, nothing comes close. But with that said, this is still the best place there is, and uh, you know, I, I will never leave America. Love to leave her, baby. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that doesn't mean you have to like it. That doesn't mean you have to say we're always good because we're not. I mean, it's America. We're human beings. But, man, no other way, place on earth I'd rather be. None. Oh, just love it. Love America, man. How can you not love it? You know, just think about us founded on. Just, oh, my goodness. That's ah, great. I'd take this over any day of the day. And all these people, I got to go to Thailand. I got to go to the Philippines. Look, they can, I don't care. By all means, do that. But don't sit there and, you know, say that America is evil because the government is. That's just dumb, man. It's dumb. All right. Denise says less than a year to retire. Right on, man. Uh, I can retire if I want in less than five years if I choose to leave my COJ. Freaking awesome. Harry retired about two years ago, and he's not looking back. My man says, I got at least 15 to 10 to 15 years. We got Loves Park, Illinois. Do they have beaches in Loves Park, Illinois? Brad says, one more year of retirement. All right. Oops. One more year of retirement. Teaching for 33 years. Right on, man. I don't want to be jacked from here. <laughs> Your theme song from Phil Collins. I don't care anymore. Uh, don't care anymore. Did I see a picture of Phil Collins on stage now with like a crane, a cane? I just like, geez, that's sad. Kind of like seeing these old metalheads from the day. They're all balding and just, oosh. I don't know. I didn't like it. Oosh. Um. Uh, Chicken Charlie says, I've been buying clothes on munis like mad. Uh, I'm still of the opinion rates not go too high because of debt. I, I completely agree. Yeah, right on. Barfield Financial. Yeah, Chris Barfield freaking kicks ass, take names. I went on a freedom tour and saw the 19th of the month in Fort. Look at those puppies, though. Oh, my God. Look at those dogs. Oh, just... Yeah, Ninja, dude, 100%. I want a 457 so bad I'm applying to all my counties for jobs. Right on. Um, well, let me text my better half. All right, so let me give you an example. All right, so my brother texted me today. Are you terrified that Biden and his dementia is going to start World War III? His comments on removing Putin are literally insane. Imagine if Putin said he's trying to move Biden. Um, I mean, maybe, but there's literally nothing he can do about it. I mean, that's, that's know, says, what are you going to do? He'd be terrified. I mean, Biden, look, Biden, he, he's not even a mouthpiece. He's just, he's a figurehead. I mean, 
he doesn't run, him and Kamal don't run anything. It's just they're out of, I mean, it's completely run by a unit party of Republicans and Democrats alike. Why well, I think Marco Rubio, when he said um, about uh, Victoria Nuland, you know, basically if there's chemical weapons, you unequivocally think uh, Putin did it. Well, I mean, he's just setting it up for that when the false flag happens, they can blame Putin and say, look, I, you know, we, we told you. It's all fa- Rubio is just as bad as the other guys. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, I'd rather have Rubio than Charlie Crist in the Senate. Don't get me wrong. I'm not an idiot, but they're all part of the same cabal. I mean, I, I literally think a lot of these people are Satanists. I really, really do. They, they, they have sold their souls to rock and roll. I'm, and I, I actually don't say that facetiously. I'm being legitimately real on that. Um, and the, look at Hillary Clinton. I posted that picture just today about. I mean, she just looks, I and mean, you could say it's a color or whatever, but, you know, evil, this is something I've been thinking about. So I did my video, um, my experiment on the love apple, hate apple thing. And uh, the hate apple just looked disgusting. And the love apple looked fine. You know, you can almost eat it. And um, you should watch that video. It's very interesting. They, a lot of people do it rice. And, um, and some guy said, well, because the, the love apple was an airtight ceiling. I said, Sealant. It's not what it was airtight. It wasn't vacuum sealed. It wouldn't have a, a CO, an oxygen absorber. It's just idiotic. Anyway, point being, though, is I was thinking about that and I was sitting there thinking if if the words you use can cause your the water inside of you, and again, cancer and the new biology of water. I haven't read this yet. Now I'm finally done with this. I will read this next. Actually, I'm not going to read this next. I got a book I want to read by this, this, uh, oh, jeez, I got too many damn books. The, the anti library. And my mom is sending me something too. And when mom sends me a book, it's always interesting. Um, because my mom kicks ass. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Just look at that. That's, I mean, that is not a righteous woman right there. Um, ooh, creepy. All right, so next book I got to read. Hold on just a second. Uh, who is this guy? I think it's this guy. Got to get my specs on, my reading specs. Oh, I forgot to text my wife. I was too busy to text my wife. Yeah, Not Even Wrong. It's by... Uh, What's this dude's name? It's, uh, oh, I can't remember this guy's name. He's a phys, uh, the theory of the physics. I forgot the guy's name. Anyway, he's, uh, I can't remember this guy's name, but he's wrote the book right there. Uh, right there. Peter Wolf. Look, I can't, not even wrong book. Yeah, this guy, Peter White. The failure of string theory in the search for unity in physical law. Now, he's a big pro-vax guy. You know what I'm saying? So all these people say, you should open up your mind. Man, my mind is open, man, 100%. So that's the book I got to read next. Because string theory is is clownish. But because it sounds so impressive, people are like, oh, my goodness, string theory. Uh, string theory. Anyway. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, so uh, I forgot what we're talking about. All right, so times are tough. I know I just got back from Big K, bought three rolls of toilet paper, the good stuff too. Let me just text. That's not what we're talking about. We're going off on that. It's going off on a book. Oh, about water. That's right. Um, all right, so what I was thinking is if your bad words, your evil, negative, all that stuff is affecting the uh, the inner workings of, of physical objects that have water in them. You know what I'm saying? Because water is, is breathe is living, um, and the bacteria in there, all that stuff. Um, so if you're talking and and being mean and hostile and all that, that hurts other things as it reconciled by the, uh, the love hate experiment for rice and my own case for apples. What is it doing internally? What is it doing internally? It just hit me today. I was like, worked yesterday. I said, man, you know, it, just think of all the negative stuff you're saying is affecting your surroundings 
in negative ways, as witnessed again by the experiments that we just talked about, well, what do you think is doing inside of you? I said, man, I never thought about that. Anyway, point being, I was just thinking about it. I was like, maybe you guys, I guess, start being more optimistic. I, I, was, I was actually pretty proud of myself today. I was going to bash this lady. Um, not bash her. I was going to say, this is a problem with some of our police officers because she was huge. She should never been a cop. She was huge. And I was going to say, and I said, you know, just follow the advice. If you got nothing good to say, don't say anything. I was like, this is why she just, you can't have this. You shouldn't have women freaking in, in police roles. I'm sorry. They're just, they're not, they're, I just, I'm sorry. You shouldn't. Now, that doesn't mean they can't be. Obviously, no one's going to say, you can't be in here if you're a woman. But either, come on, man. No, there should be no women in police. That's just a fact. Um, uh, unless they're going to be in the back office, you know, helping push papers and being, um, you know, calling breaker, breaker one nine, you know, go down Chicago line or something like that, but they shouldn't be chasing hard, hard and criminals. No way. Part two of that, you shouldn't have these freaking, these huge people, um, in sheriff's as a sheriff's deputy. It's just, it's just, it's not good. And it's just, uh, anyway, and I was going to post them on, I didn't, I felt good. I say, hey, that, that would not have advanced the ball if I post this. And whether it be negative, it's just, I was going to say, this is why you shouldn't have this. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I'm glad I didn't because you know, why, you don't have something good to say. Don't say anything. Look, I'm the biggest hypocrite. I'm, I grant you. I'm trying to work on it. Uh, best ninja pot China makes. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, yeah, I saw that, man. Adams got away with mandates for the entertainers, but not for the regular people. But the Democrats are for the, for the little guy. Oh, boy. Pablo is kicking butt. Eat lacinato, kale, sautéed, and alvo. What the hell is lacinato? I never heard of that. But sautéed, olive oil sounds good. Kale, I just eat raw, but that sounds pretty good. Yeah, um, well, my man Jonathan, did you get cut off here? Josh, what is your opinion of setting up whole life insurance and using... I'm not sure what he's saying. Ah. Such a baby. All right. This is what I'm talking about, man. Allen. Been spending the last three months watching Scanlon videos. And make sure you watch the ads, Alan. So I get that sweet, sweet George Soros money. All right. Here's Marie. Right on. I'm retired at 60. Have income covering expenses until I'm 67. I can't decide where I should put my money from the, uh, from, if I should put my 401k from the VTI into Wellington or now or wait until I'm 67. Uh, I would put in Wellington. <laughs> I would. Because the bonds actually, I just, I can't stress enough. I mean, the bond, the, what do we say? Bonds are down 12.5%. You're, let's actually look. Hold on a second. I don't care anymore. Oh, oh. I don't care. Oh, Phil Collins, but uh, there's another song about I don't care, but it's more of a my kind of music. I forgot what it was. All right, let's see what we got here. We're gonna go to Vanguard. Bond B, uh, BND. We'll go to BND. There we go. And we're going to come over here and we're going to come over here to share screen. And we're going to go here. We'll go here, market research. And we're going to see what the total bond index has done for three months. It's down 7%. That doesn't seem so bad. One month. Three percent, six months, seven. Okay, there we go. Year to date. All right, so it's down eight percent for six months. All right, that doesn't seem that bad. Let's go for one year. Uh, seven percent for a year. Oh, look at that. Ooh, I like this. The total bond index is down. I'm assuming this is on annualized basis. Two point four nine percent annualized. I'm not sure if that's annualized. 
I don't know if that's any last. But uh, what we're going to do, I don't think that's any last. All right, so hold on a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. We're going to stop that. And then we're going to go to Portfolio Visualizer. Oops. Come over here. Is Denise, has Denise gone to bed yet? Because you know, she got to go to bed early, that Denise. Got to go night-night. Night-night, Denise. Night-night. All right, so we're uh, – I'm just goofing on Denise, everybody. Everybody hope recognize that. And to include Denise. So we're going to go to BND, 100%. And we're going to go to Portfolio Visualizer. And what has Portfolio Visualizer done? Uh, we start with ten thousand bucks after a year is down to nine thousand five hundred, so it's down five percent over the course of the one year. So now let's go over to three years time. We'll go to twenty. We'll go to twenty nineteen. Nineteen twenty twenty. There you go. Good. And it's uh, ten thousand. And it's at, you know, so it's, yeah, I don't, it's not really that bad. Yeah, so I don't get what uh, what Schwab is saying there. That, I don't understand. Hmm. Let's go back. Uh, hmm, that's weird. Oh, I got to share it. Hold on a second. You made me feel like dancing. Been dancing all the way. You made me feel like romancing. All right, so why? I, I don't get Why am I saying that? Oh, hey, Pablo. Now, so I'm not sure what, what that's about. That The uh, I, I only thing I can think of is that's, that's not total return. So let's. Uh, do we got a thing for total return here? Monthly total returns. There we go. Oh, here we go. One year is down 2.65. All right, so one year down 2.65, one year here is going to be more than 2.6. Yeah, okay, there we go. Wow, that's weird. So check this out. From point to point or price to price, just $10 to 8 bucks, whatever it is. That's price to price. BND is down 7.03%. When you factor in total return, which is dividends or interest payments, it's only down 2.65. So you got to recognize the difference there. That's a big deal. All right, that's interesting. Um, I'm surprised to see that. I thought it would be worse. All right, so if we go to uh, uh, BFINX, BFIIX, yeah, year to date down 1%, one and a half, uh, almost 2%. Wow. And then we're going to go to. Yeah, all right, there you go. Down 2.48 one year, year, okay, yeah, 1.7. Yeah, so I mean, you know, if we've had, let's go to one other thing here, real quick. The intermediate, intermediate, right there. If anything got knocked around, it should be this. Hey, look at that. Intermediate treasury is down 8.38 from price to price, but from the total return, that's what year to date, for one year. Uh, for one year, it's only down 3.22. That, that's just not that big of a deal. All right, so let's go to Vanguard Long Term Corporate. That should be getting, this one should be getting smacked around. 8.55 for one year. That's 4%. Look at that. Yep, 4% basically. That's just no big deal. All right, so hold on just a second. What we're going to do, and we're going to put down the context of uh, daily, tre oops, daily treasury. Are you watching tennis or are you watching basketball? Who's winning? It's not North Carolina anymore, is it? 
Yeah. Oh, I thought I heard a basketball game on. Nah, I don't care. I just wonder. So let's go to. All right. So here's three month. That's 90 day paper, essentially. 0.19 at the beginning of uh, February. And now it's at 0.35. So it's double, basically. Let's go for the whole year. Let me go. Point oh eight the start of the year, up to point three five. So that's a tripling of short term rates in the last uh, basically three months. If we go to ten year treasury, one point six three, and now it's at two point. Um, why is it only going February? Hmm. Hmm. I guess I got to get current. Why did it only go to February? Why is it stopping at February? Okay. That's weird. I'm not sure why it's stopping at February. That's strange. Can I do something wrong? That makes sense. Let me go back. I must be doing something wrong. Why did it stop at February? All right, so U.S. Treasury rates. There we go. Why don't we stop at February? Huh. I'm confused. I'm not sure why they're stopping at February. That's, uh, that is weird. Well, just a second, guys. I'm, uh, hmm. Yeah, this update is May 27th. Well, that's weird. Why are they stopping? I don't. That doesn't make any sense. Let's, uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. Huh? That is weird. So what's happening is the the U.S. Treasury uh, Gov isn't giving us the updated for the whole month of March. It's not about Sniffy Joe. All right, so let's go to uh, all right. Let's go to. Let's, go to, let's just go to overview. Let's say and go to uh, interest rates right there. All right. All right. So here is the. Uh, this is a 10, 10 year. Uh, I think it's a 10 year. No, what is this right here? Interest rates. That's Fed funds rate. Um, so you can see, yeah, still looking for the 10 year. Um, hold on just a second. Yeah, Fed funds rate. I don't want the Fed. I want the 10. Um, that, I, we'll just use this. All right. So that's yeah, not. Where will the 10 year treasury go? Interest rates. Well, anyway, um, that is weird, man. I don't know why they got rid of the. Uh... Huh. All right, either way, it doesn't matter. We know for a fact that the Fed, the, uh, the 10 year treasury was trading well below what it's now. Now it's at two and a half. And yet these bonds are, let's see, the 10 year treasury is at. Oops. 2.492, which is crazy. Oh, here we go. Just look at it. Why 
What the U.S. Treasury? What are they doing up there? They're so worried about Ukraine. All right, so at the beginning of January, the 10-year Treasury is at 1.5. Now it's at 2.5. It's gone up 100 basis points. That's a 40% increase since the beginning of January. At the end of July, it was at 1.234. So basically it's doubled. It's gone up 100% at the end of January, of July. So that's what, eight months or something like that. And yet you're looking at 3% decline in friggin', um, you know, basic bond funds. Wow. Wow. We really had that bloodbath, didn't we? We really got snuffed out. Um, just doesn't seem that big of a deal. But Josh, they're going to raise more. We don't think people are already assuming that and they're not already pricing it in. So going back to what Marie said, should she move all the money to Wellington or keep the – like, I don't know Marie's story. I can't say anything. But I'm just saying it's like, look, at the end of the day, the bonds do have upside. And just look at the history of the bonds when they get knocked around. Could they go down a little bit more? Sure. Sure. But, I mean, I'm in Wellington now. I'm 51. And I still got a mortgage. and still got three kids at home. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, hope that makes sense. I, I, I don't think I would put everything – in VTI, if I'm uh, retired, I just that doesn't make sense to me. And just from a pure diversification perspective, having some bonds makes sense, risk off a little bit. And on top of that, it seems to be some upside of bonds in my opinion, a lot more than downside. Um, consider investing what you can't withdraw, the kingdom will repay in exponential ways. Consider investing. What you can't. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Okay, there we go. I didn't know what you're saying. So my man says, what's my opinion about setting up whole life insurance policy and using that to store cash? I, um, uh, I, I'm just not a fan. And that doesn't mean I hate whole life insurance. I just, I, I think at the end of the day, um, so, so ask for a projection of what your cash value will be. And this is your walk away money. In 10 years, guaranteed, and then projected. So they're going to show you the guaranteed amounts. What will I have as cash value, which I can walk away with in 10 years? As for a projection showing that, guaranteed, and probably less than what you put in. What will it be based on current projections in 10 years? And I got a sneaky suspicion is this not going to be very high. You know, the current projection is probably 3.5% as a crediting rate. And you factor in the cost of commissions that gets paid out over 10 years and amortized, plus the cost of insurance and all that, I bet it won't be much, if anything. And so they say, okay, what's my projections going to be in 20 years? Again, this is projections. What's my guaranteed about amount? And you can get a pretty good gauge right there. I just I had a guy on here uh, three years ago who I just blew up because he was touting that uh, the firm he was with, I could tell he's a newbie, at a, uh, a six and a quarter, six and a half percent credit interest. He called it interest rate. I said, really? Uh, interesting. Six and a quarter, six, whatever. We'll just say six. Up. It doesn't matter. I said, so, so run an illustration. What are we going to be showing as a cat? If I dumped a hundred thousand bucks in there, what's my cash value in 10 years? Because if we had a six and a half percent interest rate, it should be $165,000, right? Anyway, of course it was not. It was like 98,000 bucks. If even that, I said, yeah, see, your crediting rate is not an interest rate. Your crediting rate is what you're getting credited for, i.e. it sounds like an interest rate, but it's not. Because of that crediting rate, you still got to subtract what? Commissions you got to pay, cost of insurance, the fees that are thrown in there and all that. And as such, I said, so you're not, it's not a six and a quarter, six and a half percent interest rate now, is it, guy? He's like, yeah, but as he goes, that's because you got to pay the commissions and all that. I said, but you're, that's not what you said. You said your, your company is mass mutual. I know that was going to pay six and a half, whatever it was. And that's simply not true. I walk away in 10 years with my money back. Maybe if I'm lucky, thus, I did not get six and a half percent interest, not in the, the way most people look at it. And it's just, you know, this guy was ignorant. So I, I just had to blow him up because I could tell he was a rookie, but he was sold. This is how you sell this stuff. It freaking pisses me off. And they said, well, in 20 years, I said, okay, so in 20 years, after we pay back the cost of insurance, I mean, the commissions, um, I should have what? Well, even I, I, How much should I have in there? I'll even say the first 10 years is free. The second 10 years in, 
I get a, a six and a half percent. So I should have 165,000 in cash value in, ten, in, in 20 years, right? Because the first 10 years, we'll just say it's a wash, which is silly, but we'll just use that. The second 10 years, I get my six and a half percent. Well, no, because I said, I said, so you're full of crap, man. It freaking pisses me off. I hate that crap. Now, the interesting thing is, if you would have taken a whole life insurance policy back in the late 80s and 90s, dude, you freaking catch me out, man. Catch me out. Because those whole life insurance back then are still paying. A lot of them are guaranteed a minimum of 5%. Five flipping percent. You're not getting that anymore. You're just not. So anyway, I don't know what the whole life universe is anymore. I just, I find it somewhat silly, the idea that to... A low interest rate environment, you got to pay for the commissions of the guy who sold it to you, um, all the costs of insurance that goes in there, and all the various fees that you're going to make any money. I just don't think you're going to. And then you can mech it out. Mech is a modified endowment contract, which makes it like an annuity, and nothing wrong with mechs at all, but it takes away your ability to live tax free for retirement. It's just, it's, there's a lot of negatives that go with whole life right now. That's a fact. Now, I like whole, I have eight whole life policies, eight. Four for two for each of my children, because I think the whole life policy over a long period of time is is the cat spam, one hundred percent. But the whole life policy that my man is saying, using that to stash cash, uh, it's not liquid. And when you take the cash out, it's going to be less than what you put in because you got to pay back the insurance company. It's just it's just not worth it. Man. Now, can you build some serious assets in whole life for the long term? One hundred percent. I'm a big fan. But to stack, no, not as a place to stash cash. No way. All right. Tom bought one Powerball ticket, one Mega Million ticket, and then he put the rest on Villanova. Um, C fund sucks. Moved 95% to G fund. Why would anyone say the C fund sucks? Oh, it's the S and P five hundred, man. Oh boy, I have a sneaky suspicion. Alan is uh, is uh, he sees it's gone down in value, so he jumps. Now, look, I don't know what Alan's circumstances. Don't really care, but the idea the C fund sucks. I'm just what <laughs> because it has lost a little bit of money. Okay. Oh boy, that that right now is a. Uh, is the we have we there is some issues with investors doing that like it was a, it's a good fund why because it's done well it's a bad fund why because it's done poorly like oh the rookie league stuff man rookie league and it's uh oh. i've heard this look i hear this all the time well i don't want to buy that fund why because it hasn't done anything i want to buy this fund why because it has done things like oh oof, oof, oof. Bite my tongue, bite my tongue. All right, my man, uh, this guy just moved to C67. Oof, I'm not sure. I think this is the guy who says 10 to 15 years from retirement. All right, so that, that doesn't bother me. I presume he's still working. Hey, oh, come on, babe. Man, this Oh, the best, thanks. I got the smoking hottest wife in all the world, and she doesn't want to get on the freaking thing here. I want you guys to be jealous of me, how I married up. So you got Josh, Private E1, and they got General General Rooney. That's Charles made a name. And somehow we were able to fraternize, fraternize, whatever it's called. So you got Private E1, Private Joe Snuffy, you know, getting Article 15s, had to mop and buff the floors because that's such a crap shoot soldier. And General Scan General Rooney comes in. She goes, let's go. Like, yes, ma'am. Where are we going? Let's go pop out those kids. I was like, yes, ma'am. Let's get this done. And how many years later? See, we started dating in 93. What are we on? 30 years now? Now we've only been married since 99. So 93 to 2022. Wow. It's a long time. Wouldn't happen any other way. It's funny too. In a long time, seems like just yesterday. You know what I'm saying? We don't really fight anymore. It's nuts. We get in arguments like, um, I'm just more, I just, I, you know, the kids are going to figure out the kids. She, well, she's a mom, man. She's a mom and I'm a dad. It's just all there is to it. I'm just like, look, kids can figure out their own. 
I don't, uh, I don't sweat it too much. You know, she gets real nervous about the kiddos because like, as if, you know, well, it's just his mom. Let's just leave it at that. All right. My man says, uh, Harry, 86K at 61 or 141K at 70. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not falling you, Harry. I don't get it, man. 86K. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Like, how do we? It's a 401k, so how do we know it's gonna be 141 at 70? But let's just take a, let's just. Uh, all right, so Harry's better half, all right, is uh, 61. So that's nine years, nine n, 86,000 plus minus present value, no payment, 141. And future value, compute interest rate. So it'd be 5.65. That's what you get, Harry. 5.65 for her to wait until 70 to get 141K. Nah. If it's guaranteed, nah. yeah. Well, you got Michigan. Dude, Michigan kicks ass. If you are 86 and have 250K that you want to invest and be relatively safe in case I need it for insisted living, any recommendations in cash? Uh, the last of my kind. I will. I will check it out. I read... Articles that many pension funds are facing major losses in Russia. What do I think about Vanguard Core Bond Fund? Yeah, I got no clone. I mean, if it's Vanguard and bonds, that's Vanguard bonds are synonymous with kick ass. Doesn't make it make it money. It just means fees are low, James. And if fees are low, um, that's the only way to make any money in bonds. You cannot have a bond fund with high fees. That, I mean, it's just you can't do it, man. I'm going to show you one reason I'm actually somewhat optimistic about the stock market. <laughs> um, this is going to crack you up a little bit. Let's see. You want to grow? Oh, I sang that song yesterday. What's those with when we were vampires? No, but I don't want to sing that. I, um, oh, man. What was I singing earlier today? All broke up again. There we go. All choked up again. I can't play it. All choked up again. With, with these two hands and the rage I'm in, I think I just killed a man. I think it was my old man. Seen him in years and now he's bleeding tears and his head is in the palm of my hand. Anyone know who sings that? All choked up again. All right. Where have all the public companies gone? I find this is pretty interesting. Um, this is from a couple years ago, but they every year they regurgitate these things. Uh, some businesses are staying private. Others are getting bigger. That's not necessarily a problem. No, it's not necessarily a problem, but uh, I want to show you. Buy land, they're not making anymore. All right, all right. So right here, number of domestic companies listed on the U.S. stock exchanges. All right. So we have less than less than four thousand. We have eight thousand. Now that doesn't mean the pink sheets and the the uh, penny stocks and all that, but listed on the S and P or oh, the stock exchange, the Amex, Nasdaq, New York Stock Exchange, uh, I'm sure, Philadelphia Stock Exchange, but basically. There's less than 4,000. Why has this happened? Some blame regulations, notably the SOX legislation designed to counteract the accounting frauds in the 90s. Uh, the U.S., uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that can't be the whole story. The decline began in the late 1990s, well before SOX. Uh, much of the earlier shift was probably payback for the abundance of poorly conceived companies that came to the market in the exuberant decade. So fewer pump, uh, public companies isn't necessarily bad. Measure another way. Moreover, the public company is far from dead. They've decreased in number but grown in size. Their total market value as a percentage of domestic product is close to the peak it reached in 1999. 
That granted, size itself might be a bigger issue, but fewer bigger companies could reflect an unhealthy degree in, in industry concentration, i.e. the moats, the moats. I hate it, but it is what it is. Again, though it's gen- dangerous to generalize, in many cases, concentration can be benign. Uh, where lack of competition is a problem is best addressed by a case-by-case study. Well, whatever. But uh, whatever the cause, ill-judged regulation, the drive to accrue market power, other factors altogether, the shifting pattern of corporate form raises big questions. All right. Why is causing uh, there to be lack of companies on the stock market? So let's take a gander if I still have this article up and I do not. Okay. What happened to that article? Hold on just a second, amigos. All choked up again. Right here. Right. I think I just killed a man. Boom, boom, boom. If my if my son sings, when my kid's son sings that song, I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. It's FYI. Um, all right, so let's see what we got here, man. Oh, new corporate corporate climate change disclosures proposed by SEC. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Companies are going to spend more and more on compliance to show their climate change, uh, whatever the hell it is, their emissions. And all. It's just so freaking stupid. Uh, reflect their business under new rules proposed by the SEC as part of a drive across the government to address climate change. Under the proposals adopted by a three to one SEC vote, public companies would have to public. Remember, we just talked about that public companies on a stock exchange. This would be all public companies, but generally speaking, all we care about is the stock exchange. We have to report their climate risks, including the cost of moving away from fossil fuels. Hey, buddy, as well as risks related to the physical impact of storms, drought, higher temperature. What does that do? All that does is a freaking lawyer's dream and does what? It creates more regulation and more costs for compliance, which means less um, ability for companies to compete. It's Look, man, it's the fascism. The big companies jump when they're told how high. They don't mind. Why do you think big companies love minimum wage? Huh? Why do you think big companies love minimum wage? Because it reduces their competition. They can why do you think Amazon's like, we'll push for 15, 15? Because it knows the other companies are trying to compete can't afford it. They're scrappy. I guarantee old Jeff Bezos, when he was starting out, did not want a big minimum wage. Guarantee flipping to you. It's the same old thing. How can we reduce our competition? We reduce our competition by uh, building a better product, Laura. Getting the government to make it more expensive to get in business. We can pay the cost of compliance. Our competition can create the moat, and as such, it's fascism. We got more and more smaller companies, big business, big government. It used to be big labor, other than the, the labor's unions of the uh, the, um, the government. But there is no such thing as big labor. I mean, are these really even labor unions? Point being, man, that's when you have lesser and lesser companies going public or staying public, going private, there's lesser and lesser companies to invest in. All right. So what happens when supply declines and the demand stays the same or the demand increases, you get, all right. So, so, so I'm going to ask you guys, we're going to come down here. Oh, Kevin's leaving. Kevin's going to go bye-bye. Oh no. Bye-bye, Kevin. I'm just goofing. I got, hey, I got super chat. and see it right there. Thanks always. Consider the dog. Tra- oh, thanks, man. Love you. Love you. Good stuff. Got super chat. Normally super chat show up initially. All right. So what happens? You got supply declining, demand staying the same or increasing. What happens to price? Anyone want to say what happens to price? All choked up again. Think I just killed the man. Anybody? Bow, bow, bow. Supply goes down, demand stays the same or increases. What happens to price? Glad you guys are doing that. I'll keep singing. 
Have you ever met a little command that couldn't break a poor boy's chin? And here it goes all again. Right on. So Jeff B., Harry says increases. Exactly. I guess they didn't want me to sing it. All right, so exact right. So what happens if we have smaller, smaller, smaller private company or publicly traded companies on the markets on stock exchanges? Hey, baby, you want them up here? Um, and yet you still have the same amount of money pouring in four hundred one ks, pension, all that. Inherently, you're going to have an increase in the value, the market capitalization of the companies that are left. Now that doesn't mean there can't be a decline. Doesn't mean there can't be a two thousand eight, but just gives you a more of a of a, of a tailwind to push the markets forward. It's vague. It doesn't mean it's based on earnings. It just means it's based on last man standing. All right. Uh, let's see here. Time, time, time keeps on dripping into the future. Where to put money into an after-tax cash brokerage account versus maxing 401k? Um, I don't know what your tax situation is, so I won't be able to answer that. Yep, Dave Ramsey says no to whole life insurance. And Dave Ramsey doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. I just wish, I wonder how many people have had canceled their whole life insurance uh, that were issued back in the in the late 80s, early 90s, even late 90s. And uh, they, I, that uh, so infuriating. How would Dave Ramsey know anything about life insurance? He's a real estate guy. I just, it's so freaking idiotic. So idiotic. How would Dave Ramsey know anything about whole life insurance? That's ah, so freaking stupid. Isn't it? Really? Uh, Oscars? Um, <laughs> That's like, man, Eric says, Oscar's on, got to go. <laughs> How Innovation Works by Matt Ridley. Yep, I'm a big fan of Matt. Someone has sent me a book on by Matt. I haven't read it yet. Um, the, the Optimist, The Rational Optimist. Uh, you know, I like Matt. He's all right. He's been writing the Wall Street Journal for many moons. I pay no mind to the Wall Street Journal anymore. But uh, I bet the Wall Street Journal's. Uh, big on the blue and the yellow of the Los Angeles Rams. I mean, the Ukraine, right? Uh, all right, let's see. Ooh, Prince William Sound. What books do I recommend? Anything Thomas Sowell, James, Thomas Sowell. Um, but I will tell you. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Oh, no way, man. Ah. Well, I got free to choose back there, James, from Milton Friedman, and I uh, I can't find it. He actually signed it. 
It was upstairs. All right, so the first thing you got to do, this guy right here, Henry Hazlitt's Economic in One Lesson, 100%. Very first book you got to read, Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. The shortest and surest way to understand basic, basic economics. Anything from Thomas Sowell, Thomas Sowell kicks ass. Um, part, and then if you, this, this right here, Carl Menger's Principle of Economics is, it, it's freaking insane. It's insanely good. It's a German economist from the, uh, the uh, this is before we even thought of something called the Austrian School of Economics from a long time ago. Uh, this guy, I just, you'll read it like, that makes sense. You'll, you'll understand it makes sense. Let me see if I can't find a section here. This is so good. Uh, anything by Bastiat, Frederick Bastiat. He writes a lot of B-A-S-T-I-A-T. My man Ray's probably on here. I think Ray's in, uh, I think Ray's involved in economics, but I can't remember. Frederick Bastiat, big fan, long time. Uh, look, I don't agree with Milt Friedman anymore on the monetarist theory. Monetarist theory is, you know, too much money chasing too few goods is inflationary. Uh, I, that, that, the 100%, I agree with the equation. Where the monetarists mess up is they look at too much money and they don't look at too few goods. You look at the scarcity side of it more so than the monetary supply side. The scarcity side is done by regulation and idiocy in high end energy costs. It's freaking that. And this is my pet peeve. So you got too much money to chasing too few goods. All right. So I'm such an unorganized mess here. Too much money. Too few goods. All right, so here's what we got. Too much money, too few goods. That's the too much money chasing too few goods. You got the price of the, the, the price of goods going through the roof. All right. But what causes the price of goods going through the roof primarily? I will never say too much money has nothing to do with it. It's just idiotic to say too much money is the primary cause of it. It's not. It's too few goods. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa. We just talked about this, didn't we? If we have too few publicly traded companies, what does that do? What does that do? So what happens if you have too few goods and you got uh, not too much money, but just the same amount of same money? Oops. So what happens if you have the same money and too few goods? What happens to the price of the too few goods? Oh, they go through the roof. Scarcity. It's just that simple. So too much money. You make too much money chasing too few goods. Yes, it continues to go up and it goes up more, but it doesn't go up like exponentially more. It's the too few goods side. It, what causes too few goods? It's not freaking the government printing press. It's the regulations. The socialistic, fascistic way we're dealing with it right now. It's freaking insane. And it so infuriates me because so many people have are just there. I don't know what it is. They have this. It's, it, I do know what it is. They have this need to hate the Federal Reserve. And I get it. The Federal Reserve is not the problem that they make it seem. It's the regulation. Oh, it's so frustrating because it gives the regulatory agencies a, a, a break to focus on the Fed, to focus on Jerome, Jerome Powell. Uh, look, Jerome, I, I get it, I get it, but it, you know, break up the bed, or break up the Fed, out the Fed. I'd love to see all that too, but that doesn't solve the issue with inflation. It's regulatory policies. Too much money chasing too few goods. The focus is always on too much money and it should be instead on too few goods why do we have too few goods damn it's so freaking pissing me off what it's the chicken and the egg but we know the answer to that why did venezuela have to chop off zeros zimbabwe have to chop off zeros off their currency why because we wouldn't buy anything anymore because they're printing no because there were no goods out anymore they didn't freaking raise the prices or they didn't uh, print the money and all of a sudden the, the supply went down. Supply went down because of regulation and then they put price controls on there and then they print the money. Ah, it's just so frustrating. I used to have a, uh, yeah, I don't know where I had, a trillion dollars Zimbabwean uh, 
thing, but I can't remember. All right. Then Milton Friedman also says, uh, uh, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary problem. No, it's just not. It's just not at all. It's just, it's not. It just, it, it's so mind bogglingly dumb that people fall for this as if that was the end. Oh, Milton Friedman said it. He won the Nobel Prize, so it must be right. Oh, you know how many economists won the Nobel Prize that are freaking dumb? Just pure dumb. Just look at, oh, long-term capital management, and we are done there. Black Shoals. Oh, my goodness. They found the thing on options. Yeah, good luck with that. All right. So, anyway, that's what you want to read. You got to start with Economics One Lesson. I do like Milton Friedman. I got a book signed by Milton Friedman and uh, his wife, Rose Schwartz. Um, Rose, Anna Schwartz. Anna Schwartz, that's what it was. But is Rose Friedman, Rose and Milton signed it. Anna Schwartz was his partner in crime in the history of money. All right, then you got to read my man, Carl Menger. Carl Menger, once you, this, now you're stepping up the big leagues because Carl Menger basically kicks ass. I'm just going to, let's see what we got here. All right, so I just, just a highlight from it. Economy and economic goods. It's a quantitative relationship under discussion. I just, I guess so many highlights and there's just nuts. If a quantitative relationship under discussion occur in a society, that is, if the requirements of a society are for a good are larger than the available quantity, you get that. This is scarcity. That is, if the I just literally picked this up. I didn't. I, I mean, I just look at all the freaking yellow things I got in here, and you know, just got tons of different things that I just looked at. So that is, if the requirements for a society are larger than the available quantity, there is not enough goods. There is scarcity. It is impossible for the respective needs of all individuals composing this society to com be completely satisfied. On the contrary, nothing is more certain than that the needs of some members of the society will be satisfied, either not at all or only in an incomplete fashion. Here, human self-interest finds an incentive to make itself felt and where the available quantity does not suffice, every individual will attempt to secure his own requirements as completely as possible to the exclusion of others. And this stuff like that is throughout this book. Throughout this book, you have to think about it. You say, that makes sense. If you cannot be met, everybody can, and no one can. It's always scarcity. Human beings are scarce. They're scarce. They always have needs that can't be met. And so if the needs can't be met for everybody, how do needs get met? To the discrimination of some who can't afford to pay what others can. That's just a fact. That's just a fact, Jack. That has nothing to do with the money supply. It has everything to do with the quantity of the supply. The quantity, i.e., what? how many goods are out there for my ability to get. If my if the demand exceeds the goods, then the, the what's going to happen? The prices they're going to go up. And I always look at it as a neighborhood. I live in a twenty one house neighborhood. All right, I happen to be on the HOA, which I do not know how I got roped into joining. I hate the HOA. Our HOA is fine, but I'm never joining another HOA. I'll never be in another HOA neighborhood. Anyway, twenty one houses. That's it. No houses for sale right now. None. I don't know, since I've been here, probably we've been here 10 years. Five houses have gone up for sale. That's it. Not a very high supply of houses go up on the market in my neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Great. You know what I'm saying? All right. So if all of a sudden out of nowhere, five houses are put up for sale at the same time, which is never, we never had two houses at the same time, ever. If all of a sudden out of nowhere, five houses go for sale, right? What happens to price? It goes down. Because those five houses are competing against each other. And we have the same demand. The demand hasn't changed. It hasn't. So we have five houses competing against each other. If all of a sudden now, we have a whole hell of a lot of people moving from South Fulton County to North Fulton County. You're like, man, the crime is driving them crazy. They're getting the hell out of Dodge. They're moving to North Fulton County. The demand has gone through the roof. And only one house goes for sale. What happens to that house? You have a bidder's market. And this is where people say, well, that's the thing about too much money, the money supply. It's going to create more bidders. Nope, it doesn't. Because they're missing again. What causes the supply of the houses? Oh, regulation keeps houses from being built. The whole thing. Anyway, the point being is 
It's just think about your neighborhood. If five houses go on the market, the price goes down. If no houses go on the market, the prices will stay the same or go up. That's just all there is to it. All right, so you read Principal Economics by Carl Menger. And I'm going to – actually, let's see how much – that might be a tough book to get now. Um, and he – again, we're talking the Austrian School of Economics. This is the monetarist, the Milton Freeman's. This isn't the uh, Keynesians, the idiots. This isn't the Paul Samuelsons, the idiots. This is the Mon the Austrians, which is literally the only legit school of economics there is because all the others are just based on fake, number, fake numbers. And so we're going to go to um, – uh Austria, we're gonna go to Carl Menger. Oops, Carl Menger right there. Prince of Economics. Yeah, let's see. Uh there you go. You could buy that for 10 bucks. Look at that. 10 bucks. 100 percent I I actually I hack doesn't write the way I like. Uh Menger writes very easy to read, in my opinion. I like easy. I like easy. Anyway, so there's Carl Menger. You should buy that book like yesterday. All right, and then you ask, of course, we want to go back to Mises. Tough book to read, but you should. Human Action, Treaty on Economics, Louis von Mises. Um, I just This is probably the, the epitome of classic economic, Austrian economic books right here. Um, anything Mises does, Louis von Mises. Hayek is, I like Hayek. I'm, don't, I'm not trying to disparage against Hayek. I just, is. I, I like me. I like Manger. Manger is my man. Mises is good um, for reason because I'm a I'm a simple guy. And then lastly, um, this is lastly. It's just right here. Benoit Mandelbrot. And this is more of a uh, not even economics. The misbehavior of markets, kind of economics in there. A lot of economics, financial stuff. It's Mandelbrot's a mathematician, which is fantastic. And there's so many guys to read. Here's my man James Bovard. The farm fiasco. This is just sitting here, so I'm just grabbing it. How federal agriculture policy squanders billions of dollars a year, sacrifices the poor to the rich, and gives congressmen and bureaucrats vast arbitrary power over the American citizens. So many wonderful economic textbooks to read. It uh, The list goes on and on. You, you can't. Uh, it's the very break of dawn. Anyway, so I'm glad you asked because start with Carl. Start with Henry Hazlitt, Economics One Lesson. Then go to Menger, and uh, and the rest would just be like, wow, this, you'll be gobbling it up, man. I, mean, I got 8 million economics books on there. It's behind me upstairs over here. It's, it's the same. Um, oh, then uh, don't forget my man, my more recent one, Richard Koo, uh, K O O, Richard Koo, uh, the holy grail of macroeconomics. As someone on this chat was sent to me or read, it was said I should read. I read it. And I was like, wow. And that began the uh, my disillusion with the monetarist crowd. Um, right. Here's Kenneth. I was so stuck on should I relocate to New Hampshire and figure it wasn't worth it. I watched some of your pretty, pretty. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to move to New Hampshire, but it's not because of income tax. It's just not. You know, the Free State Project up in New Hampshire, big fan of. But uh, yeah, I mean, moving sucks, dude. Pain in the ass. I'm not trying. I mean, I'm going to move at some point, but it's just like, dude, don't just move because, oh, my goodness. You know, look, Charlie Baker's a clown. But, you know, I mean, I can't stand the guy. But, uh, eh, I mean, if you like where you're at, stay. If you have an HSA, start slamming cash in there and don't touch it before you start Medicare. Cannot agree more. Oh, oh, Kevin's wife just got home from being gone all weekend. He's going to catch the rest later. He's got to go see his wife. I'm goofing you, man. Goofing you. All right. Uh, my man says, you weren't a lib loony. Just wow. Yeah, I'm sick of lib loonies. Not going to lie. But I'm also getting sick of the uh, the reactionary right wing reaction. I hate to even say that because that's a commie saying. But it's just like, oh. We got to own the libs. We're going to stick it to Joe Biden. I said, you realize the culture. You'll you'll be on five to ten years now. You'll be preaching the same thing. What the libs are doing now, you'll be saying, yes, I, just the whole thing. Um, ah, there's so many just fake. I just, I mean, the I. So I'm just going back to my book, you know, Vaccination, the Silent Killer. Think about it. You were drafted against your will and you're forced to take vaccines against your will. 
that is not a free that's not free dumb in the united states it's not free but you're you're showing your patriotic duty duty by dying for the government no 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 you're not a patriot by dying for the government fyi no and a lot of right wingers fall for that crap no so you just say no dying for your government makes you not a patriot and I'm hearing Biden say, it's your patriotic duty. I'm screw all this patriotic duty crap. My duty is to God, my family, my country. And my duty is not to my government, it's to my country. And yours should be too, 100%. I don't care if George W. Bush is in there or freaking Sniffy Joe's in there. You have no obligation to die for these two guys. None. What so flipping ever. And after what we saw about the lies that got us in Afghanistan and Iraq, now we know you have no obligation. In fact, I would argue you're crazy if you go fight for these people because they don't give two craps about you at all. They don't. The only person remotely would be Trumpster because um, Trump is a patriot in the true sense. I really believe that. And, and he is, what I'm saying. And I, I truly believe Trump believed in the vaccines. And I think he still does. I think Trump is a true believer. I mean, he's wrong, but he's a true believer. In it. I, I, so, like, I can't remember the passage of the Bible, but I, I'm drawing a blank. But it's kind of like uh, he thought he was right. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Like, the guy was you're like, why would Jesus or God approve of that guy's actions? I forgot what it was. But because he thought he was doing right. And, um, and, and Trump, I think he truly believes that he's, he's doing right by promoting big, the biggest vaccine salesman uh, since Gerald Ford. Um, and I just, he's wrong. And it's sickening to me that that guy so falls for it. But, you know, Trump was a germaphobe from, from, I mean, from a long, long time ago. All right. Uh, oh, hell, I'm not going to Canada. I, one time I entertained the idea because the Canadian dollar fought, had fallen so much. Let's, just take a, let's take a gander. Let's go to uh, against the uh, U.S. dollar. Said, Wouldn't it be cool to buy a house in, in Halifax in Nova Scotia? So let's take a gander. Oh my, wait a second. No. Isn't that interesting? Hold on just a second. Interesting. So uh, start page no longer has we support Ukraine on the top right here. <laughs> so is Crane out of the news now? The start page have a BLM black flag on there. And then they said, yeah, now we're going to have the Vax. It's, it's like, uh, what was it? he said? Uh, who was it? Uh, I saw a video today. Oh, Razor Fist. I support the thing. Whatever the thing is, I support it. I, what I'm saying, it's like, wait, wait, wait. So we went from Me Too to BLM to vax to mask and vaxes and and uh, and and Ukraine in the in a matter of five years. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I forgot what we're doing. Um, oh, Canada. Yeah, let's look at U.S. dollar versus Canadian. The Canadian loony or the dollar? I always forget. All choked up again. All right, let's see here. Z. I gotta say, sometimes I do like YouTube, or not YouTube. Um, there we go. Let's see. Uh, Google, because I'm used to it a little bit. So I get to, it kind of makes it easier to get your number, your info. Uh, hold on a sec. All right, we gotta go share. All right, so let's, there we go. All right, so let's say you had a, you saw a house in Canada for two hundred thousand bucks. I'm just using that for example. You say how much would that cost me in U.S. dollars? Two hundred thousand would cost me two hundred fifty thousand in the Canadian dollars. So if you saw a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house in, in Halifax, it costs you uh, two hundred thousand. So let's let's be fun. Let's go to real. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, let's be fun. Because look, man, when I, I'm going to show you guys something about your old buddy Josh. Right. Realtor.com. 
And we're going to type in, let's talk to somebody the other day who does GIS stuff. And I just like, why do we always love maps? I've always loved maps, man. Always. Halifax. It's just weird. And I've like always just in what maps, this kind of stuff has just been always enjoyed. Okay. Oh. Hold on a second. Oop, that's not what I want. Hold on a second. We're going to go to. All choked up again. Um, so Scotia. Houses for sale. I guess you can't do real turf for Nova Scotia. There we go. Uh, Zillow. All right, there we go. So let's go to Zillow. Close out these tabs. I think I just killed a man. I'm being silly, Susie. Witchy, wiki wiki. I'm being silly. I didn't really kill a man, Susie. Wiki wiki. All right, so we got for some reason went to 400 to a million dollars. I don't want that. I don't. We're going to go to uh, 150 to two up to 300,000 bucks. What was that? 300,000 schmack is. I've been looking at a house for some guy. All right, so let's see what we got here. Anyway, so when I was growing up, my friends, so I grew up. Right here. Right there. Can y'all see that? Am I showing this to you? Oh. So I grew up right there, Peaks Island. All right. So then you have the Prince of Fun Day. Boat will leave from Portland to go up the Bay of Fundy into Nova Scotia. So go past my island, past on the in between my island and Cliff Island, which is right there. We go zoops and then take off that way. And oops, I gotta go the other way. And I always said, sitting on the beach as a poor kid on Peaks Island. That's where all the rich people got on that boat, and they all the rich people went up to uh, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, Bay of Fundy. And I always said, man, one of these days, I'm going to take that boat. I don't have any desire to do that anymore, but I would like to go to Nova Scotia. But Justin Trudeau can kiss my big fat behind, and I'll never go to Canada as long as they have a commie, fascist, in office. Anyway. So before Justin Trudeau came along with his commie ways, I said, man, you could buy a house in Yarmouth, whatever this place is. I, again, I've never been here. For 244000 Canadian, you know, sitting close to the water, said freaking, I mean, I haven't looked on this website for a long, long time, but I'm just showing it. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. You'd be like hopping and skip from the water in Nova Scotia, and there's more Irish speaking people in Nova Scotia than any place, I think, other than Ireland or something like that. I said, How cool is that? And I was like, Man, you could, you know, blah, 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 blah. But then uh, Trudeau came in with his commie ways and said, No. And I mean, I've just given an example here. So you can say, Man, you tell me I could buy a house in Nova Scotia that close to the water? Whoa. Man, how cool is that? That's pretty fun. I always thought that was fun. I'd have no real big desire to have two houses, frankly. That's I'm a lazy guy. Seems like a pain in the butt, but um, anyway, I always thought that was fun. Right. Yeah, right here, my man Ricky Sheets. Uh, I paid off my mortgage years before retirement, then packed IRA max until retired. 100%, dude. Uh, the Dems are running out of time to have the power. What damage do they do on their way out? Yeah, well, that, that's assuming the Republicans are going <laughs> to fix things. The public the Republicans just slow down the, the decline. Have I heard finally shutting down palisades? I don't even know what that means. What's a palisade? Breakup is a term Alaskans you to declare the official beginning of our thought period. I gotcha. This was a challenging winter for us in the North Pole. Oh, I did my time in purgatory, lived in Cook County from then. 
Spent a bunch of time in Austin. Oosh. Yeah, forget that, man. Tim, Tim Klein, I'm 62 year old, getting ready to retire. End of year, I'm thinking about using Vanguard's. Yeah, I don't have any problem with Vanguard's personal advisory service. I, I just, I don't. These guys are having a hard time finding people with any kind of seasons behind them, if that makes sense. Um, Schwab's in the same perspective, and uh, I don't know about Fidelity, but I, uh, I don't know. I, I just don't know what you're I, – I, I don't have any qualm with it. I just – what are you going to get for it? I don't know. I just don't. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I got I got feign uh, what's the word I'm looking for ignorance there to some regard I I know there's some good advisors but I know there's some crappy ones and I don't know what you're gonna get that's the problem oh Brian says he missed the day when people didn't wear their party on their sleeve while less fighting I guarantee Brian uh, doesn't say that when he's on a liberal show you know what I'm saying I guarantee um. And the funny thing is, Brian, at the end of the day, this wasn't by the choice. This was by force. So you could wish that the Democrats didn't force us to choose sides. But unfortunately, those days are long gone. So you're going to have to choose sides. That's all there is to it. Now, I don't like the Republicans very much, but I despise the Democrats. So as long as the Democrats are as nuts as they are, which they are, I mean, the idea that their Supreme Court judge doesn't can't define a woman. Um, that's just it's pure insane. And she's only there because she's black. We know this. I mean, did um, Amy Coney Barrett get there put because she's a woman? Absolutely, one hundred percent. At least she wasn't an Ivy League grad, thank the good Lord. But yes, I mean, Trump wasn't going to get another white guy. I get all that. But Biden said right out the gate, "I'm going to get a black woman." At least Trump didn't said, "I'm going to get a woman." But without question, Amy Coney Barrett was there. A primary because she's a chick. We, everyone knows this. Um, but the facts are that this chick can't define a woman because she's not a biologist. It's nuts. And it's okay. It is what it is. Enjoy the ride. It's going to be fun. But don't give me this. I wish people didn't wear their politics on their sleeves because I don't, you don't like my politics. The facts are, dude, that bridge is sailed. That boat is sailed. And now it's time to, to pick a side because regardless of what you think about politics, politics thinks about you. That's what I'm thinking. It's always kind of crapping me up. I don't care about politics. That's great. That politics cares about you, and they hope you don't care. Um, let's see. All right, so where's my... Yeah, I just, I got no... Um... I, got, I got more viewers on than any other state. I, I just got, I got no patience for uh, uh for the oh, politics, oh. i just don't care because what that means is you don't like my side and you want people to say what you want to hear and i get it i get it you know i used to follow this guy some history guy i liked he was in the army he lived in hawaii and then he started going political i said no, i'm out i just don't want to hear it you know what i'm saying um Marie says, I think Pablo needs to be smiling, showing his teeth. Yeah, he doesn't smile. Uh, uh, with the Fed probably increasing the Fed funds rate to 2%, is now a good time to sell my paid-for house and cash out? Well, you got to live someplace, man. Where are you going to live? Uh, oh, we were talking about, okay. Good. So let's keep going down here. Right. All right. My man says retiring in ten months and four days. We'll have approximately eighty k in cash. Won't, but won't need forty k of that for four years. What are your thoughts on setting aside ten k a year with tips? Well, if you're doing ten k a year, why don't you do those I bonds, man? Hell, those I bonds freaking kick butt because you can do ten k a year. That's what I would do. Yeah, I, I think Trump is the biggest vaccine. Obama's the biggest firearm salesman in history of mankind, and Trump's the biggest vaccine salesman in the history of mankind. 
Trump did it because uh, I think he truly believed in it. Obama didn't believe in firearms, but people believe that he was a anti-firearm Nazi, which he is. And uh, people say, okay, we're, we'll, uh, we will then go ahead and, uh, and, and uh, I honor your commitment to taking away our firearms. Sunday evening says Rex, right on. Yeah, I saw. Uh, we were watching a little bit of that St. Peter's, North Carolina. They just couldn't hit anything. North Carolina's hitting everything. Uh, let's see. They only do it monthly. I missed something. Uh, I'm. Retired, should I put all her 401k money in Roth from her paycheck till she retires at 65? I, I can't, I don't know. I don't know your circumstance. Maybe. Um, sounds like you're moving in the right direction, though. Uh, Javier says he wishes Social Security was gone because he doesn't want to pay boomers. Oh boy. You're really poking, poking the bear there, big guy. Yeah, why not put cash in bank CDs? It's not about yeah. I, I completely agree. Um, I get look. I got no problem with that, brother. Why not put cash in the bank? And it's not about returns. It's about keeping the safety. One hundred percent. I I got no qualm at all with that. Uh, Ray says if. Uh, if you are five years or less from retirement, know that there are four plus sell signals on right now. Uh, I just did a video on the real estate bubble, not about to burst. Watch that video. I just post that today on both my channels by accident. I usually don't like to do that, but I didn't realize which channel I had up. Um, oh, and uh, someone asked about economics books too. Um, it, another great uh, thing here is, is on. Um, Go to uh, hold on, let me see. Uh, um, so here, get the, my man Nick Nassim Nicholas Taleb's books on uh, on pretty much anything this guy writes. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, so get this this set. The scene Nicholas Fool by Randomness, Black Swan, the better. I haven't read this one. Oh man, it's got this. There's only had four. Okay, sweet. So skin the game, anti fragile, uh, the Black Swan, Fool by Randomness, and the bed of Pro Crusties, whatever that is. Um, get all five. And that's how I was introduced to uh, ben, Benoit Mandelbrot. Ironically enough, my daughter studied Benoit when she was at Georgia Tech. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And he would, look, he fell for the, uh, the COVID crap. I don't know why he did. It was weird to me. I said, damn, Nassim, what the hell? I mean, I, it was like my man Michael Edison. I, and I love Michael Edison. Big guy, uh, long time, first time. And I've interviewed him a couple times on my channel. You know, he's a, a pretty elaborate mathematician i mean the guy knows stuff and i could not believe he fell for the climate change crap at least nasim nicholas didn't but michael said but josh why would they lie i was like what because michael destroys the investment industry he kills them he's like dude these guys are freaking idiots it's, he he hold he pulls no punches it's awesome reading i said i couldn't believe i was like my why do they lie? He goes, I know why the investment people lie because they can make money. Why would the climate change scaremongers lie? I said, I, I can't believe you can't see this. I couldn't believe it. I still can't. He's starting to see it. Not so much that these guys are evil scumbags trying to get rich off the fear of a climate change, the Al Gore-ish, but he's starting to see that there's more to the story, which is which makes me happy because um, the idea, and I just, I love going on, Various websites, you know, these scaremongers. Well, we got to do something. 
And I said, I bet once I, you know, these are all financial guys who are all flying around, you know, they're fam- probably half of them own jets. I said, oh, yeah, hey, well, uh, when's the last time you've flown? Well, you can't expect me to drop everything I can. If you are if you literally believe the world is going to fall apart because of CO2, you should freaking get out of your damn plane and get a, a bicycle, you freaking fool. I'm sick of this crap. My man Brian said, I wish we'd have to get political. We get political because your life is at stake, dude. Your very freaking life is at stake. Wake the hell up and fight back. And you fight back by saying, no, no. We are going to be political back at you because they don't want you to be engaged. How do people not see this now? They want you to be, I just want to get along. That's how we got here because we didn't have the guts to say, no, 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 no. You want to freaking make my cost of energy go through the roof? Get off your damn plane. Get the hell off there. But I buy carbon credits. No, you freaking don't. You don't buy carbon credits, and carbon credits are a big, fat scam anyway. In fact, I still find it ironic. I try not to laugh at people's deaths, but one of the biggest traders of carbon credits, one of the biggest traders, died in a plane crash. His plane went down in Colorado or something like that. And I said, how ironic. I hate CO2, so I'm going to have carbon credits, and I'm going to die in a plane crash. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's like a freaking priest he's preaching against the evils of gambling and he's going to las vegas it's like me i don't like alcohol and all of a sudden i'm freaking drinking pints of guinness and i wish i could drink pints of guinness i can't there's no such thing as a pint of guinness for old josh there ain't one can't do it much i'd love to be drinking pints of guinness right now i know i can't Ugh, which is too bad all right anyway so i my man ricky ricky she said what do i think about the real estate bubble and there ain't one I'm just telling you right now. So I did my video earlier today. Sure sign of a housing bubble about to pop. And I literally meant being facetious. It's not going to pop. Not going to. It's all good. There's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with buying insurance for insurance, not investment. You don't buy whole life for investment. That's just FYI. You're talking VUL, variable universal life. That's investment. Whole life isn't like that. It's just a cash component to it. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's like an investment, like a CD's investment. They're just not. But you also get life insurance to go with it. That's that's just a fact. And, um, you know, there's always, anytime you're combining, it's kind of like, should I buy stuff with downside risk mitigation? Well, yeah, that means you're going to lose some upside. And that's nothing wrong with that. But let's be sure that we know what we're getting into. You can't have both. You can't have up full upside uh, without and, and downside risk protection. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Can you tell me the difference between a dog and a cat? No, I'm not a veterinarian. <laughs> oh, man. No one wants to send you to war. Oh, boy. Oh, Jeremy, once again, just like the other night, jumped up to watch Legal Mindset. Hey, there you go. 30 October 22 is my buyout day for my corporate COJ. Awesome. They're never going to eliminate RMDs. They want the taxes. And in fact, if anything, they're going to squeeze them. You see that a mile away. Uh... I mean, okay. Uh, Charlotte needs to fix the edit button. I don't get it. Do you control what Black Trust does? Please I'll take my. Josh, would you agree the notion that the reason the market hasn't completely tanked is because everyone's in- no. <laughs> 
I do not agree with that. Look, the market has done actually better under Republic under Democratic presidents than Republican presidents. I mean, no, I don't agree with that at all. You really think people are investing based on they think the GOP is going to sweep Congress? And remember, the Congress is both houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate. So don't say Congress and the Senate. You say the House and the Senate, or you say Congress. No, not in the least, man. I don't think so at all. I think at the end of the day, it has to do with we have what um, what we I've talked about a million times a Sunday. You have low interest rates, right? You have low interest rates. People say I can invest in bonds at 2% and get killed by inflation. That's their thinking. I don't agree with it, but I get it. Where I can invest in stocks, and I know it'll be up and down, but at least I get a dividend and potential for more growth. Or I can invest in real estate. And I have one of those three things. So, I mean, you know, people have money and what are they going to do with it? Now, can you say people have money because of the stimulus? I highly suspect that's not the case. I don't think so. Well, I think there's some people, I'm not going to lie. The stimulus checks, I think that what's done is they've done studies and most people use a stimulus check to put in savings and to do what? To pay off debt. 100%. Um, there's been some cash out refis, 100%. We know that. A lot of that money's probably found its way to stocks. They say, I can get a 3% mortgage. I'll use that money to uh, to buy stocks, 100%. I mean, that's the inflated asset that the Federal Reserve is doing with cheap rates. I, I get it. Um, you know, but markets go up. It's not like the markets are freaking, I mean, let's be real here. Since 2000, the markets have only averaged, what, 8 to 8.5% 8 annual. I mean, that's good. It's a doubling every nine years, but it's not like the markets have been phenomenal. You know, for the last 10 years, they have been. Since 2009, 13, it's been nuts. And that's why I'm saying a crash is coming just to set things up like it always does. Will the markets tank forever? No. Will the markets give us 8% rates of return in the future? I don't expect so. I expect 6 to 6.5%. Uh, I factor in a 3% overall inflation. I think you're netting 3.5% rate of return. That's what we do in my, uh, in my numbers when I'm running software for that. So, all right. Yeah, 70% bonds and 30% cash it doesn't bother me in the least. So won the game, no need to play, and you can put your head down at night and see comfortably 100%. Yeah, when I found out the corporation owned your ideas, if you tell them, I was done 100%. All right. I think we missed a lot of comments. Yeah, I don't pay everything in cash, but I try to pay... A lot of stuff in cash, that's for sure. Um, I paying stuff in cash is very. Uh, I tell you, man, I don't, why? Why would you be against doing that? I don't get that. All right. When the wife cheats, is somehow the man's fault? Damn, Dave said that. I don't get that at all. What's up, dog man? Oh boy, look at this. We got a, oh, that's, we got a span. Oh, no, I can't. All right. Oh boy. Good guy, James. All right, my friends, we're going up on two hours. We can get on out of here. Um, why do we still mint the penny? Because it keeps jobs in Tennessee, believe it or not. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, but, all right. So my man Javier says, if you pay your credit card in time each month, the credit score goes up and you get cash back. Well, if you're not trying to borrow, who cares about your credit score? I get the cash back thing, but who cares about the credit score? I mean, that's the whole point. I think that's what Dave's trying to say. Like, credit score, that just means you're trying to Make it easier to borrow. Yeah, stop doing that. Imagine listening to Dave's advice in 2022 and trying to buy a house in cash. So Javier's... 
well, so the alternative is to take a big fat mortgage. But if you've been not having debt, like Dave talks about, you've been saving up your money for 10 years or so, you could buy a house in cash. If you just drove an older car, paid everything in cash, ate rice and beans until you got out of debt, use that money that you no longer use for your other debt payments and build up your cash. That's what Owen Benjamin is doing. Buying a house and building a house in freaking Idaho. And Idaho ain't cheap. Cash money, no debt. It's the way to go. All right. <laughs> Money's applying comes to my wife's party. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Good one, Rex. That's pretty good, man. All right. Uh, uh, let's see. If I make a full circle with Social Security and dividends, why would I hurt my returns of buying bonds to balance my investments? Uh, not sure. Positive theory of capital. Another Mises guy right here, which I like, Mises Institute, which I attend, and you should attend too, everybody. Don't know how to bomb, Bawark, don't know how to pronounce the name, because I'm from Maine. Um, might be nice. Might be nice. Let's see. If, all right. So here's Dennis Crit, uh, Ricketts. It's all about the blockchain. Okay. Gotcha. Home is where your grandkids live. Right on, man. Uh, all right. I, I, um, I saw a finger thing about the rich young man in Mark 10 and Matthew 19. I can revisit that in the good book. All right. Belize is a nice country to visit. Yeah, I'm not trying to live there, that's for sure. Fantasy Island, right on, man. All right, my friends, we're going to get out of here. We got to get on, get on to it. Get on. Um, oh, thanks, Poopin. Oh, dude, I hate for it. I just, oh, I hate bots. Remember last time we had that bot on here? She actually was, it was, it was a bot. Posting stuff on my uh, videos, too. We all laughed at her. She was, I'm not a bot. It was totally a bot, what I'm saying. It's, you see these bot farms. Uh, it's, you know, that's why I'm not on Twitter, because Twitter's nothing but bots. That, you know, YouTube channel, we got a lot more live people. There are bots for sure, but it was. Uh, uh, yeah, my man Javier is really not liking boomers. <laughs> Yeah, I can't stand Greg Abbott, trust me. But he's certainly better than uh, Beto O'Rourke. Uh, don't trust uh, boomers, even if they are conservatives. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Javier, obviously you got Mexican ethnicity. You don't want people to judge you because of your ethnicity. Well, you don't judge people because of their age. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I get where you're going, boomers, but that's just dumb, man. There's tons of good, righteous boomers. Hey, I got another 10 bucks right on. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Oh, that's all I have to do to get money from Rex is laugh. Uh, how did Pablo? Ah, that's funny, Rex. Oh, that's the funniest thing ever. Oh my goodness, that's so funny, Rex. <laughs> I'm goofing. Man. Next Sunday's Orban's election. Yeah, he better win. Yep, one hundred percent. I, I, you know, Orban. I'm. I'm uh, <laughs> I can't say much more because people would be like, you must be a Putin stooge. I see the world is uh, is coming to a loggerhead here with uh, idiots that don't know a man from a woman and other people who do. Let's just leave it at that. The idiots that say basically, uh, I don't want to go too far down this road, but you know what I'm talking about. That uh, the moral capacity is long since gone. Long, it's not just about trans stuff and all that stuff. It's just that's dumb, but it's a lot more than that as well. We thought I did that we're just, yeah, everyone, you know, who, why deny you know what I'm talking about? And then it just it went like from that to you will comply. And I'll never forget, and I'll get out of here. But I was watching this video in England, and two, not a video, um, it was a video, someone had posted it, I forgot who it was, a preacher back 2014 in UK, and a gay cop was 
berating this guy because he's preaching the book. You know what I'm saying? And he says, I'm going to arrest you because our time is here and your time is past. And you're preaching hate speech and I'm offended by it. I can't remember if the guy got arrested or not, but it was a gay cop. And he was sitting there screaming. You know, and I said, and that's when I realized that it wasn't just about the legalization of marriage. Because I don't have any problem with that. Um, I just don't. I just, I, I just don't care. You know what I'm saying? But just like Scalia said, Scalia said it's going to open up a can of worms we came in, we cannot unsee. And I mean, you can't see, and now we can't unsee it. And it's sad because what happened was it allowed angry idiots to jump on that bandwagon that make themselves a victim. And not just your average Joe and Jay gay person, and not has nothing to do with that, but a lot of angry people who are mentally not there, their capacity is not there have jumped on that bandwagon because they, they're they not black. Some of them are, I get you. But a lot of them are white. They're white, rich people. And they say, I have to be a victim. I'm going to jump on that BIPOC or the LB, whatever the hell it is. You know what I'm saying? And they got a lot of angry, angry people who are um, not afraid to voice their anger. And a lot of people like Brian, just, I just want to get along. And, and and we just sat there and we said, okay, and these people, they, 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 we gave up so much yardage, so much yardage. And that's why I've said all the time, we were like, you know, Nancy Pelosi and her team of bandits, it's not even Nancy Pelosi, it's the freaking, the fringiest of fringe movements are on the one foot line, it's first and goal, and we're still on the parking lot, man. We haven't got on the field to play defense yet. Because we just want to get along. And now all of a sudden, it's like, if you're a kid, I'll never forget. I was listening to the lady running for governor of Massachusetts just last week. Some some girl was saying, I am not. I don't feel comfortable going to the bathroom with a man or a woman who's showing her men private parts in there next to me. And the governor candidate, who's a pretty big, I think she's the attorney general, said, well, honey, just hold it until she leaves because she has just the right to use the restroom as you do. And this is like a, a male with a woman, if you know what I'm saying. I got to say that because Susie Wiki Wiki will ban me, showing uh, her men private parts. And the, the attorney general is saying this to a young girl. I, I said, we have, this is, we've lost our minds. And, and, and that, that was what, that's what Scalia was talking about, 100%. And now the Democrats' house just passed abortion literally at the birth. Now, that isn't going to pass the Senate, I guarantee, but the idea that, you know, a, a, what, 220 people in the House of Representatives have found that okay, acceptable to pass a law that says you can abort your child up to the freaking ninth month and whatever it is. I mean, it's insanity. We're getting ready to, you know, Joe Manchin, the, re the Republican on the, the uh, Democrats, uh, he just supported a stupid idiot who doesn't know what a woman is. I mean, <laughs> but Brian says, well, I want to keep politics the way it was. You can't, dude. It's over. Those days are over. And you can support Zelensky, and I don't. Or you can say, maybe there's another side of this that we need to be open to. That doesn't mean you have to support Putin, but you have to say, yeah, Zelensky's a clown. He's just as bad as all these other people. Never mind, he's a tyrant just in the way these other people claim Putin is, consolidating the media, outlawing the largest political opposition party. This is Lincoln esque, and not Lincoln esque in a good way. Not, and this is FDR, again, not in a good way. This is Woodrow Wilson, not in a good way. And as such, people are like, but they, oh, I have to get Putin. I have to get Putin. You're like, you realize this is a whole lot worse than just Putin versus Zelensky. You know what I'm saying? And I got to say, the line is drawn. And if you're on Zelensky's side, I don't tell you, man. I'm not. I'll tell you that right now. That, if that freaking pisses people off, I'm sorry. Don't care. That's uh, Once you start saying it's okay for a girl to hold it to go to the bathroom because the other woman in the bathroom has to pull up her men private parts, uh, that's, that's freaking sick. Once you're a Supreme Court judge and you can't define a woman, that's sick. Once you allow abortion in the freaking, the, at, basically at birth, that's sick. And it shouldn't surprise anybody when you have basically abortion on demand in all these various places.
it shouldn't surprise anybody at all. But what happened was that was what the marriage thing opened up, just like Scalia said. And it said, if you don't adhere, you are going to feel the wrath, just like that cop in the UK told that preacher. And I can't remember if he arrested him. I think he might have. Or he got cited, I think it was, for preaching hate speech. And I said, it's coming, man. And so instead of looking at the Muslims as our enemies, maybe we look at the Muslims as our allies and say, dudes, we need you probably more than you need us, frankly. Um, but we need you because this fight, they're going to come for you, too. These aren't Christian. These aren't athe- these aren't even atheists. The, I mean, they're they're anti-theism, I grant you, but they're not atheists. They are completely communist fascist, one hundred percent, and they got to be defeated. And so, when people say, "I just don't want to be political," you got to laugh at those people and say, "Then get the hell out of here. I don't want you here. This is a political channel. The only way to for for this to survive is if people engage." who have common sense, they can see it. And if it pisses people off, I just don't care. You've got to engage. And that means you're going to make people, the rules of radicals, Saul Alinsky. You got to follow that guy. You got to, you got to take it to him for freaking once, man. Okay. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Um, trying to be a, trying to stay positive, but uh, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The world's falling apart. I got kids. We would, uh, We'd be all better off if we can freaking fight back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And say, let's make sure that girls can go to the bathroom with girls. Crazy, man. Crazy. Let's make sure that we don't have abortions in the ninth month. I know that's crazy. I know that's nuts. That's nuts. I get it, but that's crazy. Let's make sure we don't cite people for preaching the good book. Ah, nuts. I'm a radical. All right. Peace out. God bless.